hear you pray. I'm going to tell you what the Lord just spoke to me and we're going to pray into it. I heard the Lord say that today as we begin to intercede for each other and we begin to stretch out in prayer that we're going to experience breakthrough in the area of purpose. There's been a lot of people in this room and there's a lot of people who are coming who've been struggling to find purpose and struggling to find identity and struggling to tap into their gift and their call and their destiny. There have been destiny blocking demons that have been working against the people of God. And I believe as we begin to pray in this room together and we begin to lift up something as a sacrifice unto him, that destiny, I feel the Lord of breakthrough is going to break out in this room. On my count, I need you to start praying for breakthrough. One, two, three, pray. Come on, I need you to type it in the chat online. Type breakthrough. Yepakaya. We decree, we declare it, that the Lord of breakthrough would move in this room. Every blockage, every barrier, every hindrance, everything that the enemy designed to keep God's people in a place of paralysis. We decree and declare that breakthrough that breakthrough, the Lord of breakthrough, that Perez would begin to move in the room. Yes, Lord, we decree breakthrough. Come on, pray, 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 pray. We push into breakthrough. We press into breakthrough. We pray until breakthrough happens. Come on and pray in the room. Pray. Oh, I feel a wind. God's getting ready to break through. Financial breakthrough. Emotional breakthrough. We pray for breakthrough. Stay tired. Stay tired. Pray, pray right here. I need to hear you. Don't let the music be a crutch. Where are my prayer warriors at? I feel breakthrough happening. We decreed release last week. We decreed release last week. And we got testimonies of supernatural debt cancellation. $11,000 worth of debt dissipated in one day because he's the Lord of breakthrough. Come on, I need you to pray into this. Father, I thank you that over this region, over this church, over this city, over this nation, that the season of the brass heaven must come to an end. The season of a closed heaven must come to an end. We decree and we declare that there would be an opening in the realm of the spirit and that you would pour out on us, say, that you would pour out on us, say, that you would allow breakthrough to bring rivers of deliverance, that you would allow breakthrough to bring winds of transformation, that you would allow breakthrough to blow in the room, blow, blow. one more thing and then we're going to move into worship I need those of you who are prayer warriors I just want we do this every week I want you to just go and anoint some seats I want you to just touch some seats there's some people coming who need what
what's on your life. We believe in the power of transferring. Come on. I need you to just pray. Move around. Move about the sanctuary. And pray. Touch. Touch. Heal and deliver. Come on. Come on. Touch. Father, we pray for breakthrough for those who are coming who've been bound in depression. We pray for breakthrough for those who are coming who've been bound by anxiety. We pray for breakthrough for those who are coming that have been bound in perversion. We pray for breakthrough for those who are coming who need to see hope. And we pray, Lord, that you would allow your spirit to move in this room like a wind. Let your fire move. Hey, my shame. We pray like they did on the day of Pentecost. They were in one place, in one room, under one accord, and your spirit began to break out, and you alighted on each of them. We say, fall on us, Lord. Fall on us. 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 Come on, pray that. Fall on us. Come on, pray. Fall in the room. Come on, worship. Fall in the room. Come on, fall. Fall in the room. Come on, come on. Fall in the room. Fall in the room. Fall in the room. Fall in the room. Say, fall in the room. Fall in the room. Everybody make that cry. Fall in the room. We need your spirit. Fall in the room. We need your power. Fall in the room. Say, fall in the room. Fall in the room. Fall in the room. Fall in the room. Let your fire fall. Fall in the room. Let your spirit move. Fall in the room. Let your glory come down. Fall in the room. Let your glory come down. Fall in the room. Let your glory fall in the room. Let your glory fall in the room. We say fall in the room. Fall in the room. Fall in the room. Oh fire, fire, fire. Oh glory, glory, glory. Oh breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. Just fall in the room. Just fall in the room. Fall in the room. Just fall in the room. Wanna see your kingdom? Just fall in the room. You wanna see your glory here? Just fall in the room. We want to see your kingdom here. So fall in the room. We want to see your kingdom here. So fall in the room. And just fall in the room. Just fall in the room. We want to see your kingdom here. So fall in the room. Just fall in the room. Just fall in the room. We want to see your kingdom here in Jesus. Your the name we lift in high, your glory. It's shaking up the earth and sky, revival. We want to see your spirit fall in the room. Your the name we lift in high, your glory. It's shaking up the earth and sky, revival. Yes, we want to see your spirit fall in the room. Fall in the room. Just fall in the room. Yes, King Jesus. It's your the name we lift in high, your glory. Go on, it's shaking. Revival, we want to see. Say, fall in the room. Yes, fall in the room. Oh, in our Father, you saw the heaven Lord, your name. Sing louder. Let this place erupt with praise. Can you hear it? The sound of heaven's about to fall in the room. Fall in the room. It's gonna fall in the room. Fall in the room. Oh, yes, our Father, come on. See, all of heaven. 
come to just praise the name of Jesus. Oh, that, that was kind of... I said, did anybody come to praise the name of Jesus? The one who woke you up this morning. The only reason why you got here safely. Jesus, our Father. Did anybody come to praise the name of Jesus? Jehovah. Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Nisi. He's worthy of all our praise. Whoa. Praise the verse. Praise comes Oh, clap toes hang right here. Let's see this right here. Let's say this. Say, let everything, let everything see that as breath. That as breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything, let everything pray that breath. That as breath. See, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hold out. Almost out. Let everything, let everything see that as breath. That as breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. See, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything. Let everything let us breath. Let us breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise in the valley. Praise on the mountain. I praise when I'm sure. I praise when I'm doubting. I praise when I'm numbered. I praise when surrounded. Here's why. My praise is to honors. My enemies drowned in. If you know it, I want you to sing what I say. As long as I'm free, see, I got a reason to praise. Oh, my soul, you shall will praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord, oh, my soul. I pray, praise the Lord, oh, my soul. Watch out. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. I praise in the valley and I praise on the mountain. We're gonna see that again. I praise when I'm sure and I'll praise when I'm doubting. Oh, praise is a weapon and it's more than a sound. You see this. My praise is to shout that brings Sherry Cole down. Come on, everybody sing it out real loud. Say, as long as I'm free, yeah. I got a reason to pray. He woke me up this morning, starting me on my way to Ireland. Cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. Say, praise cause, praise cause you reign. 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 Praise cause you re
Cause you rose praise and defeated the grave. Well, praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause, praise cause, cause, you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. You gotta go. Well, praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you rose and defeated. Well, praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. One more time, say. You're sovereign. Praise you reign. Praise you rose. Praise God, you're faithful. You shall wear. Praise God, praise God, it's nobody. You shall wear. Praise Anybody got a reason to praise Jesus? You shall wear. You sing it out, say it. Say it. So I will pray. Everybody come to praise the name of Jesus. He's worthy, worthy, worthy. Let's do that one time. He I will say, See, oh my soul. That's a reason to praise him. He's worthy to be praised. Holy, holy is the name of Jesus. You have the activity of your limbs in here. That's a reason to praise him. He's kept your mind in perfect peace. That's a reason to praise him. You almost gave up, but he stepped in. That's a reason to praise him. 
Somebody ought to praise him. For he has done great things. Father has done great things. Every time I turn around, he's So I will bless his holy name. So bless his holy name. Oh, so I will bless his holy name. I will command my soul to bless the Lord. So I will praise his name. When I feel it, I praise him. When I don't praise, I praise His holy name. Oh, oh, oh. For He has done great things. Jehovah, He has done great things. My Father always does it. It's he has so in readiness, so I will bless his oh, oh, oh. He bless his holy name. Now right there, can you bless his holy name? Can you bless his holy name right there? Can you not just sing about it because it's a song that you know, but can you actually begin to do what you were saying and bless his holy name? For I will always bless your holy name. I will always bless your holy name. I will always bless your holy name. I command my soul to bless your holy name. I will bless your holy name. I will bless your holy name. We will bless your holy name. You are the name that is the highest. You are the name that is the greatest. You are the name that is above every other name. And for that we bless your name. For that we bless your name. For you are Yahweh, so we bless your name. For you are Yeshua, so we bless your name. For you are Jehovah Jireh, so we bless your name. For you are Jehovah Nisi, so we bless your name. For you are Jehovah Rapha, so we bless your name. For you are a provider, so we bless your name. For you are a keeper, so we bless your name. For you are a sustainer, so we bless your name. For you are a healer, so we bless your name. For you are a healer, so we bless your name. For you are Jesus, so we bless your name. For you are Jesus, so we bless your name. For you are worthy, so we bless your name. For you are holy, so we bless your name. You deserve it, so we bless your name. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Bless the name of Jesus. 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 Come on, come on. Bless the name of Jesus. He's worthy, worthy, worthy. That's why I bless you, cause you are worthy of it all. That's why I praise your name. And for from you are all things, and to you are so you deserve the glory. Come on, can you take your mind off of everything else but Jesus as we sing this? Cause you are worthy of it all. Jesus, you're worthy of it all. For from you, for from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. Oh, so you're worthy of it all. Of our worship rise day and night, we say day and night, night and day, day and sin to day and night, we say day and night, night and day. You are the of it all. Oh, yes, you are the of it all. Every 
single thing I had For from you are all things And to you are all things It's you deserve the glory Oh, you deserve the glory Only you deserve the glory Come on, can we give it to him? It's only you deserve the glory. It's you deserve the glory. It's you, Lord, you are worthy. I'll just stay in this key. And no one can worship. Father, all the, all the things you've done for little old me, I make a vow that no one can worship you for me. Come on, can we sing that one more time? You, Lord, are worthy. Yes, you, Lord, you are worthy. No one can worship you. No one can worship you for me. Come on, just get a moment on your mind, a memory on your mind for all the things you've done. For all the things you've done for me. Come on, sing. Sing. No one, no one can worship. All of my worship, all of my worship, Father, receive my, receive my worship, all of my, all of my worship. Bring it to him. So here's my worship. Here's my worship. It's all of my. Can you sing that out? Come on, sing it out. Say, as long as I am breathing, I will. He says, as long as I am breathing, as long as I am breathing, as long as I am breathing. I won't ever be silent. You deserve it. You are worthy of it all. Worship Jesus. Worship you. And as long as I have this breath in my lungs, I make this vow to you. As long as I so am breathing. Come on, one more time. I so will always worship.
all of my worship. I give it all to you. I give it all to you, all of my. I give it all to you. Here it is. Here is my worship. All of my worship. Father, receive my. get my hallelujah. You'll always get my worthy. You'll always get my holy as long as I am breathing sin. the 
cloud because we worship you. I promise if you would just have faith the size of a mustard seed and worship you. I know you may not feel like it, but I tell you to worship him Cause he's coming in on a cloud He's coming in on a cloud He's riding in on a cloud And his train fills a temple His train fills a temple I will worship you to pull you out. This is the way to break through. You gotta use your voice. You gotta use your mind. You gotta use your words. This is the way to break through. As you open up your mouth, freedom fills you. As you open up your mouth, freedom fills you. This is the way to break through. If you need a miracle, this is the way. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way to break this is the way, this is the way, this is the way. Oh, this is the way, this is the way, this is the way to pray through. This is the way, this is the way. This is the way, this is the way, this is the way. This is the way, this is the way. Open up your mouth right now. This is the way. Step out on faith right now. This is the way. It may be hard to see right now. Command your soul to bless the Lord. This is the way. This is the way.
Oh 
near to you. Only the desperate people call on his name. Only the hungry people call on his name. If you're okay with it just being you, then don't call him. If you're okay with it just being you, then don't call him. But if you know that you need the Savior every day, if you know that you can't breathe without the Savior every day, if you know that you can't walk without the Savior every day, if you know that you can't make it without the Savior every day, if you know that you're truly desperate for the Savior every day, just begin to let him know how much we need you. Father, we need you. Father, we need you. Oh, how we need you. Oh, how we need you. Oh, how we need you. We can't do it on our own. We can't do it on our own. For it is not by might. For it is not by power. For it is not by might. For it is not by power. For it is not by might. For it is not by power. But it is by the Spirit of the living God. Oh, Jesus, we need you. Oh, Abba, we need you. Oh, Father, we need you. If you don't do it, it won't get done. We need you. We need you. wrong with being desperate for a savior we really need you it's nothing wrong with being weak because that's where his strength is perfected i really need you it's nothing wrong with being empty because he can fill you i really need you it's nothing wrong with not knowing how or when because he can do it i really need I come boldly before your throne, I really need you. I come boldly before your throne, I really need you. I know you don't like depending on people, but you can depend on him. You really need him. I know they failed you, but he won't. You really need him. You are the source of everything. You are the center of everything. In you we live, move, and have our being. We really need you. If the angel can cry holy day and night, we can tell you day and night how much we need you. We really need you. If we don't have your voice, we don't know what to do. We really need you. Like the deer pants for the water, like the deer pants for the water. My soul longs for you. I really need you. You are the air that I breathe. I really need you. You are the air that I breathe. I really need you. Oh, you are my everything. You are my everything, Lord. You are my everything, Lord. You are my everything. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. John chapter 14 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father except by Jesus. So, Father, today we thank you. We thank you that your spirit, even in John chapter 12, he says, if I, even if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. And so, Father, we thank you. You're drawing us today, yes. Father, I thank you. You're drawing us. You're drawing us out of depression today, yes. You're drawing us out of despondency, yes. You're drawing us out of low self-esteem, yes. You're drawing us. We thank you. We put a demand on you today, and we say, draw us, draw us, draw us. We want you to draw us. Draw us to a higher place. Draw us from this low place. Father, I thank you. With your arms outstretched, God, you are drawing us today. We cannot do it in our own strength, for it is not by our own power. It's not by our own might, but it's by your spirit. You're drawing us. I thank you, Lord Jesus. By your spirit, you're drawing us. Draw us into purpose. Draw us into clarity. Draw us in destiny. Draw us into our assignments. Father, we thank you. You're drawing us and you're pushing us into clarity. Come on, I can't hear you. Come on, I can't hear you. You're drawing us. We are a people who have been snatched out, snatched out, snatched out, and you're drawing us. Father, you are drawing us today and you are pushing us into clarity. So, Rabakade, Shiadarabahade, adorable Shata. Eddie, did you also that Arabash break it? Did you some of the Rabo go by? Ebran do see the Rebo Ostabari, Adarabo Costa Papabande, Victoria. Zeb do sikataraba rostpa de sepre kudoshpa zemando sitele be kotamande be kosapara father i come against every mind bonding spirit in the room father i thank you that your uh, deliverance power is in this room to set the captives free father i thank you every 
structure that has been placed upon the necks of your people. I thank you. You are shattering them. Even I thank you. You are shattering them with your authority, with your power. I thank you for the delivering anointing stepping in the room. Father, I thank you a healing anointing is stepping in the room. For whatever your people need, you are coming in that if you need them to be Jehovah Rapha, he's here. If you need him to Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace, he's here. Jehovah Nissi, God I've been, he's here, he's here, he's here. Hallelujah. So we thank you for what you're getting ready to do into this service. Holy Spirit of God, we thank you that you are pouring out your spirit. <laughs> you are drawing us. Father, your spirit is moving in this room. Father, I thank you. You are touching every person, every heart and mind. I thank you. You are doing it even now. Yes, Father, I thank you. You are setting captives free. Father, I thank you. Even in this sermon series, Love is Blind, I thank you. You are teaching us how to love. Love how you want us to love. Father, I thank you. You're even uh, changing our perspective to see us as you see us father but it starts with seeing you correctly father i thank you you have made us in your image and so father we thank you that we see ourselves from that lens father i thank you as we go through this service oh god i thank you that your presence will continue to stay with us and never leave us and so father we thank you it is in jesus name we give you name, praise honor and glory in jesus name Welcome everyone, welcome, welcome to Cultivate. If we can give a hand clap and welcome our online watchers right now, welcome. All right, so I'm just gonna give a few announcements. I won't be before you long. So uh, on Pentecost weekend, Friday, May 17th, we are having a prophetic gathering here at 7.30 p.m. We have a guest prophet coming, and more details are coming, so stay tuned for the registration information. We also will have Cultivate Core. Next, Cultivate Core will be on May 5th at 12 p.m. for global and virtual partners, and more information will be coming for that as well. We are also looking for more volunteers, so if you're interested in volunteering, please see Ed Leah in the back after service, we're actually looking for our worshipers. So you can text worship to 770-746-8147. Yeah, so we're going to have worship tryouts. So if you're interested in worshiping, please text the number on the screen. All right. So All right, guys, it is time to give. Yes, yes, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And my brother here, <laughs> I love him to death. He is one of the most generous men I know. And he has a testimony he wants to share with us. So, share Deacon Barnhill. <laughs> All right, praise the Lord, saints. Um, so, we believe in this house and sowing, tithing, giving offering. Uh, we do believe in being generous with our finances. And so um, I've been a part of Cultivate even before its inception, before we even had a building. Um, and I've been sowing here. And this week, um, so most people don't know, but I am in the hospitality industry. So I manage hotels on a corporate level. Um, and so I have been applying for my LLC. I got my LLC paperwork together. Um, and then I started to apply for my um, 
certification. So there's a certification through Hilton Corporate um, that allows you to become a third party management company. And so on this week, I got a notice that says that I was an approved management company for Hilton Corporate. <laughs> Not only that, the man that was working with me, he said, Mr. Barnhill, I don't know, but it, I've been doing this for quite a while. And he told me, he said, I've never seen someone in a short amount of time get approved. You got approved in days and it normally takes weeks. He says, you must know somebody higher up. And I said, his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. And if you need him to do anything in your life, only thing you got to do is call his name. Yes, Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. And it's not just something that is on me. <laughs> this same favor is not just on me. This favor is on the house. And as a son, I believe in sowing into this vision. If you want that same anointing, that same grace, that same favor, I, I bid you to please partner your seed with the of this house and watch God work and watch him work he like I said he did it what normally takes weeks he did it in days I actually applied on a Friday and found out Tuesday I think it was Tuesday, it was Tuesday. morning it was Tuesday. I found out Tuesday and normally it takes weeks okay so you know I, I there's a scripture and and hopefully I don't butcher it up it said in the same season that you sowed it's the same season that you reaped a harvest and so I decree and declare over everyone in this room that will receive it in the same season that you sowed you shall see a harvest not in weeks but in days Hallelujah. I declare unto you harvest is coming Father, I thank you even as your people get ready to give, oh God. Father, your word declares as long as there is uh, the earth exists, there will be seed time and there will be harvest. Father, you say you gave seed to the sower and bread to the eater. And so, Father, I thank you that you would bless our seeds as we begin to give and partner with the vision called Cultivate Hub DFW. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. amen. And you can go ahead and give through the app. Um, if you have the Church Center app, you can give through there. If you don't, you can text 84321 with a dollar sign and the number, and it will give you a link, and it will uh, take you towards being able to give to our hub. And it's also here on the screen, and you can also scan the QR code, okay? And we also have envelopes, so if you have cash and you would like to give as well, we have ushers going through the aisles if you need an envelope. Everybody come to the front and bring their offering to the buckets up here. Also, if you were a giver online as well and you're in the building, please come tap your phone as well as an act of faith.
thank you for this offering. Make it be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom and tearing down Satan's strongholds. Father, we thank you that we would be a blessing to the Cedar Crest community and let this offering go um, to be able to help the community and those who need it. In Jesus' name, amen. All righty. Who's ready for the word? I said, who's ready for the word? I can't All hear righty. you. All righty. So we are in our Love is Blind series. How many of you guys have been enjoying it? Last week was a doozy. <laughs> All righty. So we will continue our second installment of our Love is Blind series. All righty. And we will have none other than our senior leader, Prophet Taurus. Amen. Amen, amen. Come on, give Jesus a hand clap of praise. How many of you are glad to be in the room? How many of you are glad the spirit is moving in here? Look at your neighbor and say, hey neighbor, I feel God's power moving. Turn to somebody behind you and say, hey neighbor, I feel God's power moving. And I know that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I don't know, I felt a little freedom break out in worship. Just wave your hand real good if you feel free. I say, wave your hand good if you feel free. That's what happens in worship. Worship changes your situation. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hands, there are pleasures forevermore. Can you thank God for his presence? One more time, just say thank you. The Christian faith is unlike any other religion because our God is alive. When we start talking about him, he shows up in the room. When we call his name, he responds. One more time, we've been lifting him. Just lift your voice and say, Jesus. I love to call that name. Healing is in that name. Deliverance is in that name. And breakthrough is in that name. Just one time, clap your hands for breakthrough. Take your seats. I want you to grab your Bibles. I'm so excited that you are here and you decided to be with us, whether you're in person or you're online. I am super glad that you decided to come and be a part of what God is doing here on today at Cultivate Hub DFW. If this is your first time, I'm nosy. Just wave your hand real high. I want to see all of our first timers. Can you turn around and look at all our first timers? Make them uncomfortable. Just welcome them real loud in country. Come on, welcome. Give them a big, big Texas welcome. We're so excited that you've decided to be with us on today. As you're leaving the place, I want you to stop by the balloons in the back. We have a corner. We want to get your information. We want to show you how to get connected with us. We want you to learn more about what's happening here at Cultivate Hub DFW. We love Dallas. Look at your neighbor and say, we love Dallas. We love Fort Worth. We love this region. And God has strategically positioned us here to equip believers, to empower families, to embrace communities, and expand the kingdom. We're on a mission in everything that you do. Uh, uh, by being here and by partnering with our vision makes ministry mobile. I want to thank all of you who've been generous to give and to sow and to partner with us, whether it's by tithe, whether it's by offering, whether it's by sacrificial giving, those of you who are here and online, I just want to say thank you. We are a generous church and everything that we are able to do is because of you. Give yourself a hand. I want you to grab your Bible and go to Jeremiah 1. Can we thank God for our leaders? We have some amazing leaders in this church. Thank God for Deacon Trey came up here and started Storefront Revival in my church. My God. I'm going to have to put him up on a Sunday morning to preach. Where Mother Jan at? Jan, thank God for all this. I am, look, I'm, we're in a space we're growing, and I have been doing everything almost everything by myself for a long time. So it's, it's a phenomenal that we have leaders who are stepping up to the plate to help carry the vision. Look at your neighbor and say, will you help carry the vision? That means we need volunteers, we need worshipers, we need production team people. If you know how to run sound or you want to learn run sound, you want to learn how to use a camera, you want to 
volunteer in any way, shape, or form. We've got room for you. Jeremiah 1, I want you to go to verse 4. We're going to start uh, our second installment of our Love is Blind series. I believe that self-love is scriptural. Self-love is the key to breakthrough for many Christians. Last week, we taught about the love drought, and we taught about how we have been uh, conditioned as a religion to focus on giving out to others without having anything for ourselves. So we've become masterful at masking and, and loving everybody else without really knowing how to love ourselves. What I found through studies, through prayer, through interacting with people is that, the, that most people really don't love themselves. We love our families and we love, we, we love our favorite football teams. We give love to anything and everything, but we often fail to adequately love ourselves. I want you to put your hand on yourself for the first time and say, I love me. I want you to know that the only way that you can love you is by accepting the love that Jesus gave through his sacrifice. By his sacrifice, you are truly able to love yourself into a better place. Jeremiah one chapter uh, chapter one verse four gives us a picture of what God does through people who love themselves the right way. Uh, Jeremiah will start. He's talking in chapter one, and he's walking us through his journey. He's walking us through his painful experience. Jeremiah was an extremely emotional person. Many theologians call him the weeping prophet. He literally wrote a book called Lamentations, meaning tears. <laughs> he was a very, very, very sensitive person. But I think that his journey, I think that his journey uh, really gives us a picture of how God responds to people who love themselves well. Verse 4 says, Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am only a youth, for, for to all whom I send you, you shall go. Look at your neighbor and say it with an attitude and say, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Turn to somebody else and say, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them. For I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, behold, I have put my word in your mouth. See, I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up, to break down, to destroy, to overthrow, to build and to plant. This morning, I have breaking news for you. Unfortunately, there has been another outbreak. There is a sickness on the loose that is much older than COVID-19. It's much more deadly. It's claimed more lives than tuberculosis. And it affects many people from birth. Today, I have to take a moment to give you the anatomy of a sickness that has affected many people in the Bible. It's an old sickness that grabbed Moses. It infected Gideon. Esther had this sickness. Isaiah, the evil, eagle eye prophet, was sick. But the person that caught the sickness today that I want to pick on is Jeremiah. Everybody say Jeremiah. Jeremiah. This sickness is dangerous because there is no vaccine for it. There is no pill to prevent it. There is no vitamin 
that can help it. This sickness is dangerous and your mask won't save you. Look at your neighbor and say, your mask won't help you, baby. I can almost guarantee that you are sitting next to somebody who has been infected with this sickness, whether they know it or not. <laughs> the origins of this sickness can be traced all the way back to Eden. This sickness has a name, and it's called self-criticism. self criticism you know you have this sickness when there is an internal voice gnawing at your esteem it doesn't come from the outside it's the inner critic today I want to deal with the inner critic I want to deal with this inner critic because it manifests in the form of perfectionism and self-sabotage. It's a sickness that grabs many believers that grew up in religious environments. It grabs hold to you the moment you're able to comprehend the difference between right and wrong. It grabs hold to you the moment that you are faced with Failure, fail, failure, self-criticism is a silent killer. And the strongest indicator that you struggle with self-love is that you wallow in self-criticism. Take a moment and investigate the inner critic. How do you talk to yourself? What do you say about yourself? Self-love is scriptural. And the only way that you are going to reach your destiny is if you take a deep dose of self-love. Somebody shout, self-love is scriptural. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 begins to give us a definition of love that I think we need to turn introspectively. We love to utilize this scripture in relationships, in friendships, and in marriage. But today I want to turn this scripture inwardly. And I only want to take the A clause of the scripture because this is the, is the greatest portion that many of you get caught up on. 1 Corinthians 13 starts off and it gives us two attributes of love that I think we need to dig into in order to deal with self-criticism. 1 Corinthians says love is patient and love is kind. Everybody say that love is patient, love is patient. and love is kind. If we turn that introspectively, then we can give these attributes to self-love. Self-love is patient. Are you patient with yourself? Or do you get frustrated when it takes you a little longer to reach your goals? Self-love is kind. How do you treat yourself when you make a mistake? Self-love is scriptural. Many of us struggle with self-love because self-love demands that you be kind to yourself in the face of failure. In self-criticism, there is no room for failure. When you're hard on yourself, you don't give yourself a break. When you're mean to yourself, you can't see the things that God is trying to teach you through failure. The truth is, if you are going to operate in self-love, you are going to have to be friendly with failure. Turn to your neighbor and say, you've got to be friendly with failure. 
Now, I know that sounds strange, and it's the opposite of what the culture teaches you. The culture is teach, teaches you that you're never supposed to take an L. It teaches you that you're never supposed to have a bad day. It teaches you that the moment that you slip up, somebody's going to take your place. It teaches you that you don't have time to slow down and take care of yourself. You've got to hustle, and you've got to grind, and you've got to secure the bag and start another business and start another Instagram page for a business that you'll never finish it teaches you to keep hustling and it never teaches you to stop and take care of self self love is scriptural self love demands that you have to be friends with failure the reason that many of you are so Critical of yourself is because you've had a bad run-in with failure. Who am I talking to in the room? I know this is a little heavy, but I need you to take a deep breath and say amen so that I know you're alive. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm country. I need a talk back, church. I know this is a little deep, and I know it's a little uncomfortable because I'm, I'm picking into your false comforts. I'm, 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 I'm applying pressure to your, your fake identities. Self-criticism creates a version of yourself that God is not interested in blessing. I know this modern progressive Christianity teaches you that God wants to bless any part of you no matter what you do. No, 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 no. Our God comes with a standard. And his standard is love. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, his standard, his standard is love. It's a challenge to many Christians because we don't know how to learn from failures. We get stuck at the last mistake. And self criticism positions itself like a cage. And so what happens is you move from self-criticism self to self-sabotage because failure is, doesn't feel good. And so self-criticism presents itself as self-protection. You start criticizing yourself and saying, I'm only going to do what I know I can win in. I'm only going to walk in what I know I can do well. And you never push into new opportunities. So you're presented with something and self-sabotage tells you you've never done that before. There's a possibility of failure here. So I'm not going to walk there. But I want you to know that in only, the only way that you are going to please God is by taking a risk with him. Some of you have been beckoned into new seasons. God has called you up higher. He's presented you with opportunities that you have turned your nose up at because there is a chance of failure. But I need you to know that what God has been trying to pour out on you, hallelujah, what God has been trying to give you, what God has been trying to do through you demands that you love yourself the right way. You won't be able to carry the fullness of what he called you to until you learn to deal with your failures. Here's the problem. Self-criticism is a sickness, but God doesn't treat self-criticism the way he treats other sicknesses. God heals cancer. God heals leprosy. He heals high blood pressure. He pops bones back into place. He, he, he raises the dead, but he doesn't deal with the sickness of self-criticism the same way. <laughs> He doesn't heal the critic. He calls the critic. God's answer for self-criticism isn't healing, it's calling. <laughs> 
Self-criticism is dangerous because it caused Moses to back up from the burning bush because he said, I can't speak well enough. Self-criticism is dangerous because it caused Gideon to ask God for more confirmations than he really needed. It's dangerous because it caused Isaiah to muzzle himself. He said, woe is me for I am a man of unclean lips. Self-criticism is dangerous. It caused Adam and Eve to hide from God when he said, who told you that you were naked? Self-criticism Criticism in the life of Jeremiah shows us how God deals with that sickness. He doesn't heal the critical. He calls the critical. <laughs> he anoints those skilled at avoidance. He puts glory in the belly of people who pray get somebody else to do it. If you are critical, it could be a sign that you are called. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, if you're critical, it could be a sign that you are called. We see a pattern in the scripture that we cannot ignore. He always steps to the forefront and calls the people who want to disqualify themselves. Why? Because he is not concerned about your criticism because before he called you before you became conditioned by rejection to be critical in yourself, he called you. Before you learned how to be critical, he called you. Before you felt the sting of rejection, he called you. Before you felt the pain of failure, he called you. Put your hand on your chest and say, he called me. This is why this church equips believers. Because we understand the complexities of being called. <laughs> Jeremiah understood the complexities of being called because it seems like God calls the critical at the most inconvenient times I mean let's take let's, let's, let's look at Jeremiah 1 contextually God calls Jeremiah to be a prophet at the worst time possible If we pay attention to the climate in scripture, we'll see that it mirrors America almost identically. God calls Jeremiah during one of the most tumultuous times in Israel's history. There is political instability. There's so many changes in kings at the time the king that started off was Josiah then the king became Johaz and then it became Jehoiakim and then it became Jehoiachin and then it became Zedekiah there is rapid change in changes in leadership and there's rapid shiftings in allegiance but God doesn't care <laughs> He calls Jeremiah during a time of religious reform. Now, this is important to understand because Jeremiah was born into a family of priests. In other words, he grew up in the church. He saw the ugly. He heard the green room conversations. He experienced the nasty priest. He experienced the two-faced church mothers. He, he experienced the, the, the cliques and the gossip. He, he grew up in church and I can imagine Jeremiah saying, I've seen this before. I am not interested in being called. He grew up in a time where there was wars and rumors of wars. The Assyrians were declining and the Babylonians were taking over power, but God didn't care. Have you ever seen to be in a situation in your life? I know that this seeker-friendly modern church tells you that God cares about everything. He's a big Teletubby in the sky with rainbows and candies waiting to make sure you feel good, but the truth is there are some things God doesn't care about and your comfortability is one of them. What he cares about 
is your call because there is glory that I that he is trying to get to the world through you and you cannot reach glory through convenience that's my problem with the churches in the DFW region I don't care you can't whoop me I can't stand these churches who want to get to the glory and they want to do it through convenience there is no sacrifice in prayer there is no fasting and praying there is no laying out on the altar and crying out to God until fire falls I believe God is looking for a generation of people who don't care about their criticisms because they are called somebody say he called me he called me thank you can you move up to the front I need an amen he preached during times because of all of the political shiftings he preached in the midst of economic difficulties God called him no matter what his bank account looked like <laughs> and some of you need to get rid of some inner vows that you've made because you told God I won't serve you until you fix my money and God is saying the truth is your money will be fixed when you say yes to my call Jeremiah was called in the midst of social decay. Everybody say social decay. The people of Judah were so called up, caught up in piety. They were proud. They were puffed up and idolatrous, just like America. God called the prophet in the most inconvenient time. Have you ever experienced God tell you to do something or had you to talk somebody? Have you ever been in the grocery store and God challenged you to talk to somebody and you're like, Lord, who is going to come talk to me? I need somebody to come and give me an encouraging word. I need somebody to come and slip $20 in my pocket. Why are you challenging me to sow into somebody that I don't even know? Somebody just shout, God doesn't care. Because we've got to get out of this Christianity that tells us that it feels good all the time. Sometimes being called is uncomfortable. God doesn't care about your inner critic. He cares about the people that he wants to bless through you. God called Jeremiah in the midst of a prophetic climate that was ugly. If you read Jeremiah, you'll find that a great deal of Jeremiah's ministry, he spent calling out false prophets. I wish there was another Jeremiah in this region now because I am so sick of false prophets. Y'all prophesied that Jesus was coming back during the eclipse. Why didn't he come back through the last eclipse? I'm so sick of these jelly back prophets prophesying to get a dollar through cash app and not standing up for holiness and righteousness. God is looking for a generation of Jeremiah's. Please sit down. I'm still in my introduction. He calls the critical. He calls the critical. This is your sign. If you are painfully self-aware of your unmet needs, unhealed hurts, and unresolved issues, it could be a sign that you're called because Jeremiah 1 shows us signs of people who are sick with self-criticism just check your neighbor's forehead and say are you sick tag somebody online and say are you sick I know I know you may appear good but there may be something lying dormant Call, causing you to reject your call. I'm going to give you some signs of self-criticism and then I'm going to let you go. If you can't say amen, just say ouch. If we go back to the scripture, one of the signs consistently that we see Jeremiah present beautifully 
when people are called and self-critical is the first thing he said. He said, behold, God, look, you're missing something. <laughs> A sign that you're called and self-critical is that you feel like God missed something. Maybe you think he doesn't know about your booze. Maybe you think he doesn't know about your DMs. Maybe you think he doesn't know about the condition of your heart. Maybe you think that he doesn't know about the things that you are tormented with at night. Sometimes when you are sick with self-criticism, the call of God makes you doubt the sovereignty of God. How could you call me? I, the first time I heard uh, 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 my, my call to, to the, the prophet's gift, I was 19 years old. I, I, I started prophesying when I was seven years old, but my call as a prophet, he started talking to me about it. I had a dream. I went to heaven and I was sitting across the table from Jesus and he started calling me and, and, and telling me about my call as a prophet. And I was like, you, you missed something because I'm 19 years old, fresh out of high school and fresh out of my parents' house. I am trying to do everything that I'm big and bad enough to do. God, it's not a good time. Jeremiah very similarly said, you know what, Lord, maybe you missed something. And the truth is, God knows exactly who you are. And he justifies who he calls. The scripture tells us he doesn't care where you've been, what you've done, or who you've been with. You are still called. He didn't miss anything. He saw you in your sin. He saw the DM that you responded to. He saw the 3 o'clock in the morning booty call that you took. He saw the anger that you deal with. He saw the weed that you smoke. I'm going to look the back way because I don't want to offend any weed smokers. He saw everything that you did and he still called you somebody say I'm still called number two he said no Lord maybe you missed something and number two he said you can't be calling me because I don't know what to say have you ever been in that position you feel like God is challenging you to do something and you don't have any blueprint you don't have any script. You don't have anybody. Nobody's done it before you. Like, how can you be challenging me to do this thing when you've not told me what to do? How could you be calling me? I don't know what to say. Look at somebody and say, I don't know what to say. The reason that you don't know what to say is because you've been listening to the wrong voice. The Bible tells the story about a woman with the issue of blood and she would have died from her sickness if her inner voice had not changed. The Bible says she said to herself, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, she said it internally and that internal voice changed her outcome. Maybe you don't know what to say because you've been listening to the wrong internal voice. You've been listening to the voice of abuse. You've been listening to the voice of disobedience appointment you've been listening to the voice of pessimism you've been listening to the voice that tells you you will never be what God called you to be but the moment that you decide to listen to what God says you'll know what to say somebody say touch my mouth Lord so I'll know what to say the woman with the issue of blood tried doctors for 12 long years but the moment the scripture says she said to herself what are you saying to yourself? She said to herself, if I could touch the hem of a... She got a revelation that I believe came straight from God because there is no scriptural evidence that God said anywhere in the Bible that if you touch the hem of Jesus, you'll be whole. Where did she get it from? Who told her that? Something was on the inside of her. And I believe God put it there. And I believe that same thing is on the inside of you. My grandmama would call it the Holy Ghost of God. Something is on the inside of you trying to lead you to your healed place. Trying to lead you to your place of obedience. Trying to lead you to your place of breakthrough. But you've got to silence the inner critic so that you'll know what to do. Somebody say, speak to my heart, Lord. Number three. He said, God, you can't be calling me. I hope y'all are blessed by this. He said, God, you can't be calling, calling me because I don't have any experience. This is 
says, whoa, I'm a child. Hold on. I've not seen this before. And the truth is, sometimes God does the greatest things through the inexperienced. The inexperienced are willing to be inspired. And I believe what's happening in the American church is God is removing people who are who are stuck on doing ministry from memory. I believe what God is doing is he's raising up young Jeremiah's and inexperienced prophetic voices who said, I didn't go to the school of prophets. I don't know all of the language. I don't know how to read Hebrew and I don't have one of them nice looking prayer shawls, but the word of the Lord came to me and it said that I should do. I wish I had some people in this room who would be willing to be in inspired by God. I believe there's a shift coming to the American church because God is tired of men trying to build empires unto themselves. He's looking for the inexperienced. He's looking for the people who don't feel like they're ready. Because those are the people that he can mold. He is the potter. You are the clay. He's looking for people who are willing to be inspired. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking about you. Turn to somebody else and say, he's talking about you. God is willing to do something new and he can only do it through people who, he, who will allow a fresh pers prophetic perspective to be born through them. We love God, but we are tired of being pimped in the church. I'm gifted and I'm called and I know it, but I'm tired of gifted and called people not being held to a biblical standard. So until this is what many of us have done, many of us have done like Jeremiah. I've seen all of this before. I've been in the church my whole life. I'm not interested in playing games with God. And so until I see things line up perfectly, I'm going to sit back on my seat of do nothing and wait until God gives me the clear. And the truth is, God is saying, actually, baby, I called you to be the difference maker I anointed you to confront the system I chose you to speak truth to power some of you have been sitting on your seat and God is saying this is the season where I need you to be inspired to move look at your neighbor and say move turn to somebody else and say move number four sign of a sickness of self-criticism. Somebody shout, it's a sickness. And the only way to get healed from this sickness is to accept your call. <laughs> Isn't that funny? The only way to get free from this sickness is to say yes to God. I wish I had about 25 big mouth believers in the room that would lift their hands and open their mouth and just say, yes, God. Number four, Jeremiah said, God, you tricked me. You deceived me. I've been Jeremiah. The Lord said, I'm going to call you to ministry. I said, all right, I'll preach. No, no, first, I said, I'll lead worship. That was, that was before I had this old school preacher's voice. I had a good singing voice. I could sing. And so I said, all right, I'll do ministry. I'll be a worship leader. The Lord said, you know what? I, 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 that's good, but I need more. I said, okay, well, I'll preach. He said, all right, that's good. Well, I need more. I said, all right, Lord, I'll travel as an itinerant preacher. He said, all right, that's good, but I need more. I said, okay, well, I'll start a university and I'll teach people about what you called me to do and what you want them to be. And he said, that's all right, but I need more. I said, well, all right, I'll start a hub. He said, that's all right, but I need a house. Sometimes God will trick you into your call. Have you ever been tricked by God? Turn to your neighbor and say, surprise, surprise. <laughs> 
type it in the comment section. Surprise, you thought that you were under punishment, but God was actually preparing you. You thought that that season was hard, but it was making you and molding you. You thought that it was an attack, but it was training. You thought it was an abuse, but it was an assignment that God was using to prepare you to stand flat-footed and accept your call. Jeremiah said, you tricked me, and you're stronger than me. <laughs> he said, they are mocking me, and they are laughing at me, and I look crazy. I look different. Sometimes being called makes you look crazy. <laughs> Sometimes being called makes you go out like Noah did and build something that they never seen before and warn them that something that they didn't understand was getting ready to come. Noah said, hey, I'm building this because there's rain coming. They've never seen rain before. I'm sure they thought Noah was crazy. But a few days later, he was able to save himself and his family because he accepted his call. Who are you supposed to save with your yes? Who's going to be in the boat that you're supposed to build? It doesn't look like anything you've seen before, but you know what you heard. <laughs> I want you to tap your neighbor and say it like you mean it. Say, I know what I heard. Turn to somebody else and put a little Pentecost in your voice and say, I know what I heard. It looks different. My mother didn't agree with it. My daddy doesn't understand it. My family doesn't know what to do with me, but I know what I heard. They told me that I shouldn't do it this way, but I know what I heard. They told me I shouldn't move to Dallas, but I know what I heard. They told me that I should just get a regular job and be like, a, like my cousins and be a teacher, but I know what I heard. I wish I had 25 people who would jump on their feet and say I know what I heard don't let them stop you you gotta build it cause rain's coming <laughs> God calls the critical in crisis you were called during a time of crisis because you are anointed to be an answer. Somebody ought to high five somebody and say, I was anointed to be an answer. Dangerous times have come, but I was anointed to be an answer. There's something inside of me that can solve any problem that I face. I can do the impossible. I can see the invisible. I can grab hold to something that's not tangible because God put something inside of me That's the answer for this crisis. The crisis that most annoys you is often the crisis that you're called to. I am most annoyed by dysfunctional churches. I am most annoyed by prophetic people who are out of order. I am most annoyed by lazy worshipers. Why? Because God wired me and called me to raise up a generation of worshipers. The Father seeketh such, those who worship in spirit and in truth. He wired me to build him a house. He, why, what did God wire you to do? Pay attention to what you complain about. Your complaints often point to your call. The thing that annoys you is often the thing that you're anointed for. The thing that upsets you is often the thing that you're supposed to overturn. You've got to accept the call. Because here's the truth. I'm at my last point. Here's the truth. No matter what, no matter your criticisms, no matter your slip-ups and mistakes, no matter your boyfriends and your girlfriends, 
No matter your rebellion, no matter how you walk away from God, no matter how you run, no matter how you cuss, fuss, and fight, you're still called. No matter how unfair it seems, no matter the fact that you didn't get training and they mishandled you at that last church and how could you call me and not give me anybody to mentor me? I need a mentor. God is not interested in giving you a blueprint. He's making you the blueprint. The truth is you're still called. I wish somebody would stand up on their feet and just wave their hands in agreement and say, I'm still called. Jeremiah tried to run from his call he tried to muzzle himself he tried to resist what God put inside of him he tried to back up from who God called him to be he tried to change into somebody else but Jeremiah said I cannot resist you because it's like fire shut up in my bones I believe that God is getting ready to cause fire to hit many of your bellies that fire is going to burn up criticism it's going to burn up perfectionism it's going to burn up the fear of failure it's going to burn up the fear of man that fire that God is putting inside of your belly is getting ready to make you ready for the crisis that's at hand there is a generation of people that are waiting on you to say yes there's a generation of people who need what God put inside of your belly there's a generation of people who need the anointing that you're trying to avoid I know you want to get some else to do it but I need about 25 big mouth believers that'll open their mouth and give God a yes I know it's uncomfortable but it's still yes I know you don't like it but it's still yes I know it doesn't feel good but it's still yes yes in the morning yes in the evening yes in the noonday yes at night lift your hands Open your mouth and cry yes. I'll say yes to your will and your way. I'll say yes to the call. I'll say yes to the anointing. I'll say yes to the purpose you put in me. It's just like fire. Shut up in my bones. It's just like fire. I won't be silent. I won't be stagnant. I won't be paralyzed, but I'll open my mouth and say yes, God. Yes to you to say yes to how you called me in the face of criticism. I say yes. I say yes. Lift your hands. I say yes, even though it's uncomfortable. I say yes, even though I want to do what I want to do. I want to have fun, but it's like fire in my bones. I want to be normal, but it's like fire calcified in my bones I, I, I want to have peace I want to live a regular life I want to be mundane and mediocre but it's just like fire shut up in my bones I pray now father I pray now father that a fresh fire would fall on your sons and your daughters I pray that a fresh fire would fall in this room and it would burn up every criticism and it would burn up every perfectionism and it would burn up every bit of self-sabotage and it would burn up every bit of fear for God has not given us the spirit of fear but power, love, and that of a sound mind. God let fresh fire fall. Come out and cry for the fire. I said cry for the fire. It's a supernatural fire. You won't be burned up, but you'll be purified. Somebody cry for the fire. Come on, cry for the fire. Hey, 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 hey. Down in your belly will be fresh fire. Satan, 
I say down in your belly will be fresh fire. Your call, your calling is greater than your criticisms. Your calling is greater than your critics. He that believeth on me, as the scripture says, out of your belly, out of your belly, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. your hands and cry for the fire of God. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Come on, come on. It's getting ready to hit many of you in your belly. Put your hand on your belly and pray. Put your hand on your belly and pray. Put your hand on your belly and pray. I feel a stirring like the pool of a pesta. The stirrings of revival. Yes. Yes. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fill us now. Fill us now. Fresh fire. Hey, para. So para la mandele de he priete nada. Sari ari ari amandolo bobri andolo bahaya. So pay up. Fresh fire. Feel us now. Feel us now. Feel us now. Come on, lift your hands. Something's happening in the spirit. He's changing and transforming you now. He's changing and transforming you now. Some of you tried to allow some callings to die, but I decree and declare that the self-same power that, re that raised Jesus from the dead, the same spirit that quickened his mortal body would quicken your calling now. I quicken evangelists in the room. I quicken prophets and intercessors. I quicken pastors and teachers. I quicken apostles and builders. I quicken entrepreneurs and family leaders. In the name of Jesus, every calling on the inside of them that tried to die, I quicken it now under the authority of Jesus and the fire that's in this room. I quicken it. I quicken it. I feel impartation. I quicken it. I equip you in the realm of the spirit with the full armor of God that you may withstand the wiles of the enemy. Come on, fresh fire fall now. If you need fresh fire, I want you to run to this altar. I feel the anointing. Come on, if you need fresh fire, I want you to run down here to this altar. Yeah. Come on. Just come down here and cry out to him. Fresh fire. Whoa. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, lay out before him. Kneel before him. Come on, fire meets the altar. Now, let me explain. This fire is only for the people who are ready to sacrifice self-criticism. Who are ready to sacrifice that inner voice that gnaws at you and challenges you to not be what God called you to be. Maybe that voice has been with you. You need to come to this altar because fire meets sacrifice. Come and sacrifice that critical voice. Come and sacrifice that perfectionism. Come and sacrifice that self-sabotage. Come and sacrifice it so that fire can meet you. Get close to the altar. Get close to the altar. Give it to him. 
give it to him. He sees and knows all. He called you anyway. I curse the power of shame and embarrassment that would try to disqualify their call. Whom he called, he justifies. Come on. Come on. How do we sacrifice? We worship him. We say, Lord, take this, imper take this perfectionism out of me. Take this criticism out of me. Come on, tell him to take it away, take it away. 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 Come on, come on, just begin to worship him. Take it away. Pastor Faith, Prophet Nikki, want y'all to help me. Come on, God is reigniting fire inside of these people they're sacrificing I curse every voice of criticism and perfectionism I curse every lying demon that tells them that they missed out on their call I curse every spirit that tries to torment them about their mistakes I silence every voice of the enemy that makes it hard for them to love themselves and I decree and declare by the authority of Jesus that a fresh fire will fall on them now come on receive it lift your hands and receive it it's blowing it's blowing it's blowing it's blowing it's blowing Jesus 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 it's blowing it's blowing oh take it away take it away come on receive it Come on, receive it. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Wanna be who you call Fresh fire. Take it away. Come on. God, I'm gonna transform your emotions. I bring complete alignment by the power. Oh, come on, come on. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire, I curse every tormentor. Take it Lucifer. away, burn it all away. Fresh fire. Say cara la base, baby, a la dacia. Fresh fire. Hey, fresh fire. Would you take it away, burn it all away? Till there's nothing left but Jesus. Take it all away. Yeah, yeah, you're still calm. You burn it away, take you're it still away, calm. take it all. You're still called. 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 You're still Take this nothing left but you. Burn it away, burn it away. Burn it away, burn it away. Just burn it away, burn it away. Until there's nothing left but you. Won't you just burn it away, burn it away. Just burn it away, burn it away. Burn it away, take it away. Until there's nothing left but you. Why won't you? I want to prophesy to you, ma'am. Just lift your hands. I feel the Lord moving things into alignment for you. I heard the Lord say, I'm getting ready to make things easy. I saw the past few months as tumultuous times for you. The Lord says it's been as if the enemy's been trying to exhaust you and wear you out and even wear down your faith. But the Lord says, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna prove to you that I hear your prayers. I see a specific time of prayer that the Lord is getting ready to call you to. 
it's going to be a night time. It's going to be one of those hours between 12 and 3. The Lord says, I'm going to cause you to pray during that time because I'm getting ready to break off some generational witchcraft that's been trying to, I don't know. Would you come up here? There's an anointing on you that the enemy hates. But the Lord said, I'm going to cause you to pray in the night season and you're going to see breakthrough in the daytime. I see I see that you endure envy. People are envious of what's in you. They're envious of your brilliance and your genius. And the Lord says, I'm getting ready to cause you to raise above the warfare. Father, I release strength and fresh fire on her. Strength for the boat. I speak to that intercessor. I speak to that dreamer. And I say, come for a power. I say come forth. Yeah, hey, 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 hey. Everything that tried to die. Everything that tried to sleep. I stir it up in the name of Jesus. And I release fresh fire. Yeah, ta 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 ta. Fresh fire, ta te pala. Come on, come. Fresh fire, I release it. I bless these people and I release them into their new season. Old things are passed away and behold, all things are new. Come here, Janet. I break off every word curse, every tormenting thought, everything that tries to come up in the midst of this new season. I shield, protect, and cover you. And I release a fresh fire on you. In the name of Jesus, I call forth deep wells of prayer. I unlock deep knowledge in the word. I unlock everything that the Lord put inside of her. In the name of Jesus, let it come forth. All things are passed away. I release a fresh fire for a fresh season, a fresh oil for a fresh call, a fresh oil for a fresh assignment. Renew her now. I release strength, strength. I release strength, 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 strength. Strength for the assignment. I pull out the word curses in her ears. She's got to hear clearly now. Every word curse. Every word curse. Every misjudgment. I pull it out. I purge it from her spirit. And I release strength to replace it. You won't be drained anymore. New strength. Come on, lift your hands. Lift your hands and worship him. I gotta go. I don't turn my seal on. Come on, just lift your hands and worship him. Come on, talk to Jesus. Don't try to figure me out. Until there's nothing left but you. Won't you dare? Put it away, put it away. Just put it away. him we gotta go those of you watching online I pray that the fire of God that's in this room 
would hit everybody watching online right now in the name of Jesus if you receive it in the comment section just type I receive fresh fire may you be reignited oh I feel the prophetic come on just worship him may you be reignited me, may you be reinvigorated. Come on, out of your city, Mahaya. Come on, just worship him. Come on. Come on, I prophesied a crystal Bryant. Crystal, I see your name. And the Lord says that I'm getting ready to cause a book to be birthed out of you, Crystal. He says, I'm getting ready to make sense of your warfare. And I'm getting ready to cause the revelation that I've given you through suffering to bring you to a place of wealth. People are going to pay you for what you write. So grab your pen and have the hand of a ready writer. God is getting ready to give you answers that you didn't know you needed to have. God is getting ready to give you the, the solution to problems that haven't even presented themselves. I release on you the strength for a new season. The strength for a new season. Strength for the new season. Just lift your hands. Father, I thank you for what you're doing in this room. I thank you that you're shifting economics. That the finances in... The, the, the fire in this room right now is shifting finances. I thank you that you're moving people into a place of stability. Uh, come on, I want you to grab a seed. I want everybody, mm, I want everybody by in faith who will stand with me with a hundred dollar seed. I feel the anointing. Y'all know I don't do this, but I feel the anointing. Give me my envelopes. Give me some envelopes and some oil. I want everybody who's going to stand with me with that $100 seat to come down and line up on this altar. Those of you who are doing it online, I want you to just say, I'm sowing. If you're going to stand with that $100 seat, I want you to just come down here and grab an envelope. This is a sacrificial seat. This is outside of your tithe, your, outside of your offering. Come on, I need every person. If you're doing it online, just type, I'm sowing that $100 seed. Come on, put the giving information up on the screen. If you're sowing electronically, even if you're sowing electronically, I want you to write on the seat. Y'all come down to the altar. Come down to the altar if you're sowing. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, this is a sacrificial seed. I feel like God is shifting things economically. I see you online saying you're sowing. That's a $100 seed. Even if you're sowing electronically. I'm going to tell you why I believe it's necessary to sow. I believe that during times where the anointing meets, such in, meets us in such a tangible way, this is the time where we should give unto the Lord. We should sow. I believe in sowing in the anointing. If, even if you say, you know what, I don't have that 100. If you have that $100 seed, you need an envelope, wave your hand. You're going to sow. Wave your hand. And, or, or come up here. You say, you know what, prophet, I don't have a $100 seed, but I need to get in on this blessing. I want you to stand to your feet. I need to get in on this blessing. You can sow whatever you can. But those of you who will sow 100, I want you to come, come down here. I want to lay my hands on you. 
Those of you sewing online, I want you to. God, I love it. We gotta go. I feel the anointing here. I, I, we gotta go, but I feel like releasing, releasing some favor. I feel like releasing some favor on some people who are looking to be stretched into a new season. If you're giving that $100, I want you to make one line. Come up here. Make one line. One line. Everybody else who's sowing another, if you're saying, I don't have 100 but I want to sow a sacrificial seat, I want you to come stand behind them. I'm going to sow a sacrificial seat. Come stand behind them. I feel like releasing an anointing. Exodus, God gave Moses instructions, and He said, "I want you to tell the people that I'm getting ready to I, I'm getting ready to build a house, and I want those who can to come in this order. I want them to bring silver. I want tell this group to bring gold. Tell this group to bring purple. I believe." that God is building not only this house, but I believe there's an anointing for building for your home. I'm praying for those of you who can't. So you say, you know what? I, I, I need God to do something in my home. I want you to sow. Even if you're not sowing 100 online, I want you to type, I'm sowing, sowing. Where my oil at? I'm blessing your home. That when you go back, give me a little bit more oil now. That when you go back, you'll begin to walk into unexpected miracles and blessings. Put the large giving graphic on the screen. Shala Dasa. Father, we release them. I, we, I gotta let y'all go. We don't stay in church this long often. We try not to. Look at your neighbor and say, power moving. Father, you said that you'd bless your people in their God. Uh, I need you to write on your envelope, write your prayer requests. Write your prayer requests. Write your prayer requests. Trey got a new job. Leo got a new job. So many people have been getting promotions. Dakeisha, I want you to tell your testimony real quick. Um, so, last week, um, Prophet Taurus was prophesying release, and um, I spoke that over myself and I sold, and um, I had been praying about a debt that I needed God to work out. And um, I believe it was Monday, um, I got a phone call that $11,000 um, towards that debt was removed. So I, <laughs> I didn't know how God was gonna do it, but he did it and I'm so thankful. <laughs> Come on, lift your hands. I release in this room that same debt canceling anointing, that financially shifting anointing, that financial shift anointing. I release it. Give me your hand. I'm going to touch your hands. I release it. I release it. Come on. I want you to sow once I release it. 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 God finna challenge you. Um, I want you to lift your hands. I touched you and God started talking to me about you making it like a U-turn. God's getting ready to challenge you to do some things again that you said you would never do before. 
He said, he said, I put, I put a sound in your belly for a reason. And it's not just to be somebody's understudy or be in the back seat or be unheard. God said, you got to stop waiting on permission to release what I put in you. For there is indeed a prophetic anointing in your belly. This word was for you, Jeremiah. There is indeed a fire that God wants to release out through you. There's a sound, there's a cry. You said, Lord, I've seen so many people do it fake. I've seen so many people do it the wrong way. I don't wanna be like them. But the Lord said, I'm giving you a blueprint. I'm giving you a strategy and I'm making you an example. Watch and see where the Lord takes you in the next three years. I just had a vision and I saw your name in lights. God says, I'm gonna make you a sign and a wonder for a generation of people who felt like I forgot about them. For it had been your testimonial. You've been like Mephibosheth. They overlooked you. They discounted you. They didn't realize you. The Lord says it was not rejection. It was protection. Because I put something pure on the inside of you and I won't let it be tainted. Lord's going to call you into a season of fasting and consecration. You've been seeing that already. Lord said, I'm calling you to that time of fasting and con consecration so that I can strengthen your sound. Because grief tried to take it. Grief tried to muzzle you. <laughs> but I unlocked that thing. I I unlocked that thing that had been locked up, that had been muzzled, that had been silenced. I unlock it now and I call you into a new season. Go back to your notes, I heard the Lord say. Go back to your notes. You were writing and you were studying, but you got discouraged and you put it down. The Lord said, pick it back up again. There are things that I won't show you in dreams and visions. I'm going to show you what's to come. And Lord said, I won't give it to nobody else, but I put it in your belly. Father, I bless every one of these people who are sowing. I want you to put your, put your seed in the bucket. I bless every person who's sowing, every seed, every gift, and every giver. And I release them into their new season. If you thank God for fresh fire in a new season, I want you to put your hands together and give God praise. Listen, we got to go. I want to challenge you to be here every Sunday. Look at somebody and say, every Sunday. I need you to become an evangelist. During this season, during this series, God is healing the called. He's equipping you. He's challenging you. He's stretching you. But he's healing you through this series called Self-Love. Can I prophesy to you? I saw a book. Would you lift your hands? I saw that there's getting ready to be a release of favor. They've, I saw where there's been so much attempts to oppress what's on the inside of you and to restrict what there are, there are people who are intimidated by you because of the call that you carry. There is something weighty. I, I smell prayer on you and I don't know you. And the Lord says, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make you a general in my army. I saw in the realm of the spirit many sons and daughters that would come alongside you and follow you and say, what must I do? They're going to say what Jesus' disciples said to them. Teach me how to pray. And the Lord says, I'm putting a fresh curriculum in you and I'm causing you to shake off an, a, a religious system. I saw where they tried to hold you and they tried to bind you. But the Lord says, I'm getting ready to put the, that, that Deborah anointing inside of you. I'm getting ready to cause you to be heard and seen and known. And the Lord says, don't apologize for what I'm going to do because your exaltation is going to be in embarrassing to those who tried to oppress you they're going to have to come back and apologize because what I'm uh, what I'm going to do is going to be so public that they're going to know that my hand was on you the whole time they mislabeled you they misjudged you they called you all kind of horrible names and said you wanted control but what you really wanted was order and the Lord says Lord says, I'm getting ready to repay you. This is a season of recompense. I took you through that season to teach you and strengthen you and deepen your endurance. 
He said, I, 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 I dug a well in your capacity. And the Lord says, now I'm getting ready to fill it. Father, uh, I see it even financially. I see where God is leading. It's, I just saw like, uh, uh, like a dump trunk of money. Like God is getting ready to cause you to have more than you know what to do with. Father, I bless this woman. I don't know her, but I bless her writings. I bless her curriculums. I bless what she's called to do. I bless who she's called to impact. I bless the sound that's in her belly. I hear it. It's a sound of Zion. It's a sound that calls people to repentance. It's a sound that calls people into restoration. It's a, it's a sound of an old, a, a, a old anointing. The Lord says, I'm going to make it relevant in a new season. I release it on her. I release her into her new season in Jesus name listen I want y'all to come back next week look at your neighbor and say you got to come back next week you got to bring somebody with you God is doing something powerful he's doing something amazing he's doing something fresh he's doing it here he's doing it now and you need to be a part of it father I bless him if you want to be a part of this church you want to rededicate your life you want to find out more about what we do here you want me to be your pastor I want to be your pastor <laughs> if you want that I want you to go back to the blooms I want to meet you back there. I want to see you. I want to get to know you. This is a church that believes in equipping believers. If you're a prophet, you're an apostle, we're not intimidated by that. I make room for gifts to do it because it's better when we do it together. If you're a prophet, you're an apostle, you're a pastor, you're a teacher, whatever you are, we want you to be here. It's a safe place, and we want to launch you into your next season. We equip believers. We empower families. We embrace the community, and we expand the kingdom. This is what we do here at Cultivate. Father, I bless these people. As they leave this place, let them never leave your presence. Be with them, keep them, and guide them. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. I love y'all. See y'all next week. <laughs>